the second part of this video we're looking at little Titan's Return Rewind and his alt mode, one of his alt modes, <gasps> there's two, it's a triple changer and he's only this size, yeah, believe it or not, um, which actually leads me to think how am I going to do this as a triple changer in my review format, uh, I think I'm just going to do um, in the same order, 1 to 10, but then like for the first two I'll do alt mode presence for both first and then alt mode playability for both second. So in the same order but just like swap them back and forth. But anyway, looking at the cassette mode, which is quite cool, um, it is strange because it is uh, quite a weird thing because it's like it's a cassette in the sense that it fits into blaster we'll get we'll look at that later um however it's sort of designed to look like a smartphone you know like you have these like buttons here and then this is supposed to be a screen i don't know if you'll be able to see but there's like a um i'll try to get the sunlight on it there's like a, a wi-fi signal bar there and a battery level there um but then like the cassette thing and my assumption is that this is supposed to be like a little phone and that this is just the wallpaper in the background but it, it, it kind of confuses the vibe then you know like I would have rather they just either stuck to the tape aesthetic or stuck to the phone aesthetic rather than trying to mix the two because then it just kind of well, at least the water slightly um, and then just because I can do it like quite quickly we'll just go to the second mode is tank mode yes wow a tank mode um in terms of aesthetics i think like i said the phone mode is all right it's just a rectangle isn't it um the little tank mode however look at this ah, he's adorable he's so adorable um yes he only has tracks on the front and not the back but given the size class what do you expect um, his little turret sort of moves up and down. Yeah, sometimes it lifts this, but he looks so cute. Um, and it does quite a good job of like covering up the sticker so that you don't see that still. But yeah, he's quite cute overall. Quite nice, quite nice. Yeah, I do quite, I do quite like the uh, the 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 effort that they. So instead of just making it like a hover tank or something sort of cheap night, they did put tracks on it. So that does add to it, you know. Um. So for that, I'd have to give him a 7 out of 10. We'll get our board up here and we'll switch to red pen this time. Just to be cool, just to be different. Um, so yeah, chunky, adorable tank mode, adorable thing. I think you have to give it at least one of the 10 points just purely for being a triple changer at that size, which is quite impressive. Um, so we'll give it a 7 out of 10. So instead of going backwards and forward again, I'm just going to stay in the tank mode and then go into cassette mode. Uh, but in terms of playability then, we have, like I mentioned, his little gun moves. Um, he does have little wheels. They're they're quite stiff though, so like they don't really roll. I suppose it's more for like, you know, like if a child is scraping along the floor, that it doesn't scrape quite as bad, you know, but they're not really like wheels. They're just there for the, for the crack basically. Um, it doesn't really do much else. He has, uh, because of the way the turret locks in in the cassette mode, uh, there is this like 5mm port on the side. So that's useful, I suppose. Might be useful for something. Um, I do quite like though how he has the uh, Titan Master pegs on the top so that uh, maybe his, his boyfriend's head can can ride on the top. You know, because that was the thing that they did for some reason. Fair enough, I suppose. Um, and then going back into the cassette mode just quickly. Again, it is just two, like two steps because it's so easy. Um, playability on the cassette mode. You would think that it's, oh, it's just a rectangle. It doesn't do anything. However, there are some quite cute like little aesthetic things you can do. So like I said, the gun uh, can store away quite neatly in the side. I do quite like that. Um, you can also go for like a, a 90s aesthetic of having uh, pegging the gun on and then it's kind of like a little aerial if you want to do that. Um, he has a little on button 
No, you can't really see that. Oh, maybe he has a little on button sculpted in. Obviously, it doesn't do anything, it's just sculpted in. Um, um, and on the other side here, we have another 5mm port. So again, you can plug that. I don't know. Um, my favourite thing about this, which is completely pointless, but it is fun, is that this is not a 5mm port or a 3mm port. It is, in fact, an uh, audio jack size. And there's a tube that runs the whole way up, so you can actually plug in headphones. You can plug headphones into this, which, of course, doesn't do anything because there's no electronic component. However, it is fun role-play element for kids. And, you know, I think we forget sometimes that Transformers are designed with kids in mind. So I think that that's quite cute. You know, like a little... It reminds me of, like, when I was younger, like, they had... Uh, I think they were called Real Gear Robots when the first movie came out. And even before that, there was some... Uh, there was like a some orange bird thing that turned into a camcorder. I can't remember who that was, uh, but just like role play toys, and even harks back to like obviously the original blaster and sign wave and like the cassette role play element. This is like a fun update to that to like have like a little so like a kid can like be all like beep 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 put put on music. You know, it's a fun role play, um, and I do quite like that playability. Maybe surprisingly high, like a six, six and a half, seven, uh, six, six. I'll give it a six. And just to prove that I'm writing it out, six out of ten. So here we have uh, Rewind in his little kiss in his little robot mode, and it is adorable. I absolutely love it. Two pieces. Um, he's very chunky in areas, like his arms obviously are quite thick, but I think we'll forgive him given that he's a triple changer at this size class. Um, his shoulders are quite big, but I do quite like that because it does sort of emulate that. I know they're not as, as like sharp as the IDW one, but it does bring that flavour in. Um, and his head sculpt is very IDW flavoured, like he has a little thingy, I can't remember what that was, but it's like a little thingy that he has on his head. Aesthetically, yeah, like quite well painted, like Rewind compared to Eject. I always prefer to Eject colours, like the blue is much nicer. Um, but as black and grey and red and yellow goes, quite good. Aesthetic, the again 6 out of 10, like he's not the best toy ever, but not the worst. In terms of, in terms of bot mode playability then, surprisingly good surprisingly high score here because um because of the transformation he can actually look up and down even though his head is on a swivel not a ball joint but it does give him an interesting range of articulation for his head which is like surprising like he has a better range of head motion than chrome dome does even though he, he is ball jointed technically um his arms sort of universal motion as usual uh no wrist obviously because he's chunky but and his, his elbows are a bit high, if you want to be you know, all about it. Um, but the only thing, his his shoulders are ball jointed, but they're completely cocked blocked by how blocky he is. But anyway, I think his legs are great um, because they're two ball joints. And then his little like toe can move, so that sometimes gives you little dynamic flares. Um, again, like no waist or anything, obviously given the size, but quite surprisingly nimble little chap. 7 out of 10. I hope you don't mind that I'm rattling through this so quickly by the way, but it is just like trying to fit in two figures in one video again. Uh, transformation then, surprisingly addictive, like because he's so small, because he's so easy. It's fun, it's not difficult, but it is, it's not too simple, so it is fun, but it's not too fun that it's too simple. Anyway, 10 out of 10. In terms of fiddleability, perfect pocket toy like you've seen that cassette mode it's because it's so flat and compact it's perfect for it's like bringing it around in your pocket or something like it's just perfect 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 10 out of 10 fillability i absolutely love these little guys two pieces they're always so fun in terms of interplayability uh his main gimmick like i said well i mentioned uh the type masters can ride on him in tank mode but in cassette mode his main gimmick is to oops ignore that uh, plug in the blaster and sit 
and that's it. Like they don't they don't do anything. Like don't get me wrong, I freaking love Blaster and Soundwave, but when you think about it, the cassette gimmick is kind of like they don't do anything. They don't activate anything else in Blaster. Obviously, they do in the cartoon and stuff, but like as a toy, they don't do anything. They just they just go in and out. They just go in and out, and that's fine. I do quite like it. Um, the other interesting thing, in terms of interplayability, actually when we bring in this other blaster, um, he doesn't fit in here obviously because this one's way too small. Uh, way too small. But in the robot mode, which will turn these two into now, they scale remarkably well together. Like, I think that that is a perfect, so like I say, even though in like in tape mode there's no chance, but in bot mode, I think they skill really well together. Like, just for, just for like a quick comparison, I don't want to derail us too much. Uh, where did he go, Freak? Yeah, where did he go? Uh, the eject that came with Blaster is adorable in his own right, and these guys might get a video in the future. Um, I really love him, spoiler alert, just in case I don't get to in, in the immediate future. But I love this guy as well, a little... Uh, rewind and he's cute perfect tape mode for blaster obviously but he is very small um in some of the episodes of the cartoon this is accurate in some episodes of the cartoon it's not but in terms of what i like as my skill i quite like how these look like they i feel like they should be slightly tall enough to like hold their own do you know what i mean so like, I do quite like how they look together. In terms of interplayability, like I said, that is fun. The blaster integration is fun, but it is limited. So a six out of 10, I think, is the most we can reasonably give him without being unfair. Accessories then, uh, his wee blaster is adorable. 10 out of 10. No, I'm joking. Uh, it, is, it is cute, but realistically, it is the only thing that he comes with. Given the size class, we can't expect too much, but I can't mark him too highly because then that would be unfair to other bots. So I think 6 out of 10 is a fair compromise for that. So another 6 out of 10. So for value, like with Chrome Dome, just going to give like the RRP uh, representation of this. I think he was like a tenner at the time uh, for this size class. And I think that's a bargain, you know, like a very well... Uh, well worth your time for a tenor, I think. I think a lot of issues that small toys turn into sometimes is that they have to rely too much on the larger stuff for the gimmick. So, for example, like the little Titan Master vehicle things, they were great, but because I really like Titan Masters on their own and I really like the vehicles that they came with, and even more modern ones like uh, the the Tar. Target Masters or whatever they were called, Battle Masters or something. Like, they're lovely, they're great, don't get me wrong. Um, and I like that they come with the Blast Effect part. But they don't do much on their own. They're kind of reliant on the bigger figures because you need, like, somebody to hold the Target Master. Or you need somebody to plug the head into for the Titan Master. But for Rewind, yes, he does have the integration with Blaster. Um, but as a toy on his own, like, to have a little... Robot was pretty good articulation for the size. Um, a little tank mode, which obviously isn't as good as some other tank modes, like uh, Core Class Megatron has a better tank mode, but he is only a single transformer compared to a triple changer. And then the little role play phone mode, which is adorable. And like I said, whether or not that matters uh, for you or for kids or whatever, it's a thing that it does and it's worth noting. So I think for value, 10 out of 10. Um, I wish that there was more like this, uh, just generally, at the time even, because like a lot of the Legends ones were just sort of small toys that were fine on their own, but didn't really do anything. So what will I give? Uh, rewind. 10 out of 10 for value. Can't beat it with a big fucking stick. And last but not least, of course, is the representation of the character. And this is where it gets interesting between himself and Chrome Dome because obviously I've already talked about Chrome Dome so I'm not going to beat that dead horse again. 
up. I just want to say how much better Rewind does it even though he's, sorry, Eject. Is it Eject or is it Rewind? Shit, have I been calling them wrong this whole time? Fuck. Well, whichever one this is, I think it is Rewind. I don't know. Anyway, um... I don't know if it's just a face, because he does have the same thing the Chrome Dome does, of like having a visor and a face mask, so it kind of blurs your emotion a bit. But maybe it's just the way the eyes are like sculpted. I don't know how well that's going to come up at all. But the ways the eyes are sculpted or something, it kind of, he looks a bit angry, looks a bit mean, looks a bit like he has personality, which Chrome Dome lacks. Like he has the je ne sais quoi, the Chrome Dome just is missing for some reason like I don't know what it is and I hope other people agree with that or if you disagree like let me know but if you if you feel the same way when looking at these toys like he just has so much more character I think I think I don't know I'm just I'm confused now of like why do I like this small one better than the big one even though the big one is objectively better but I suppose the scores will tell us that, won't they? And yeah, just like the mix of IDW and G1 charm, like I said, obviously, maybe that's because in IDW his design was more G1 based than Chrome Dome's was. Maybe that's what it is, so that the transition or like a mix of the two is better. I'm not sure. But as he stands, he is a wonderful rendition of either G1 or IDW, rewind slash eject, whatever this one is now. Uh, I'm scared now that I've been calling him the wrong one ever, all this whole video, but anyway, 9 out of 10. So the final scores are in, and, uh, 77. Do you like how I pretend to do mental maths? Because I can't at all, because I'm dyslexic, but I like to pretend. But 77, and if you may notice, despite my terrible maths, that is higher than Gromdo. Oh, shock, horror, whatever. I can't say I'm surprised, because obviously I'm the one who scores it, so I sort of knew going in. But when I worked it out, I was quite surprised. So from a distance, I sort of knew going in, because like I always, I would always like pick up this guy more than Chrome Dome. So I kind of knew going in, but it is interesting to have the scores. And don't get me wrong, like I didn't manipulate it to be that way. Like I genuinely look at every aspect of them individually. All 10 aspects look, get looked at um, independent of the others. So every mark out of 10 is individual and then they get added together after the fact. So I didn't realise that he was actually going to score better than Chrome Dome until I did the maths for it. And I'm surprised. I'm honestly surprised. But 75 and 77, respectable scores for toys that are now, uh, what, like five years old-ish? No, more than five years old, Jesus Christ, I'm old. Uh, but anyway, um, pretty good scores for pretty good toys. Next episode, um, those eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that this is episode four out of five for this first series of Peace Bop Bonanza, and next week's episode is going to be Related, well not, I keep saying next week, not next week, sorry, next episode is going to be related to Chrome Dome and Rewind in the sense that it is another double review. However, instead of being another big bot, small bot review like Chrome Dome and Rewind and like Cyclonus and Tailgate, it's going to be two bots of equal stature going off against each other or maybe going with each other. That sounds wrong. But anyway... Uh, two bots of equal stature who share the Headmaster gimmick with Chrome Dome and the Headmasters but it isn't these because obviously there's four of these guys and there's three of the Decepticon Deluxe Headmasters so what other Headmasters could it possibly be that there are two of? Oh, maybe they're also Headmasters? Maybe they're also Triple Changers? Maybe they're also Decepticons? Who do you think it might be? Let me know in the comments. So that's the, that's the teaser for episode 5, um, and for anybody who has seen my channel intro video, you know that every series of this, every series of this series, no, every series of this show, what that would it be called? I don't know. Every series of this show is going to be brought down into episodes of 5, 
sorry, series of five episodes. I cannot speak today. Series of five episodes. So after this block of five, series zero, which is like the up and running series, you know, so after this, everybody knows the score system. Everybody knows the format, so we can move on to like different themes, if that makes sense. So I look forward to hearing your guesses and or suggestions for what you would like to see as the overall theme for the next five episodes after the finale next time. And I am also working on the next episode of Bees Bias Babblings. I hope you enjoyed the Misfire video. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'll link it below. And the next episode of that may or may not be buzzworthy in stature. Maybe. We'll just have to see. Just another quick little bit of housekeeping. Uh, like I say in every episode, like please leave a like if you like the video. Please leave a comment if you have anything to say. I always read and reply. I appreciate any comment I get. Uh, if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you would like to do more than that, please consider visiting my Ko-fi page, which I have now set up, and I'll do a, I'll do a separate video on that in a minute. But please consider joining that. Uh, I have options for either monthly subs, if you're interested in that, or making a one-off donation to my uh, current uh, fundraising goal, which is to uh, get a reasonable light set up here, because like as you can tell, the lights disappeared since the start of this video, like I'm filming and it's now what, like half eight at night. Um, I'm too dependent on the weather for these videos. I really need to get like, you know, like a, like a proper big light so that I can do these whatever time of the day and it'll not matter instead of always having to try and do them in the morning or something. Because it doesn't really work. Like I live in a house with other people. It doesn't ever work out like that. But so yeah, if you're interested in helping with that, there is a fundraiser for that, or like I said, if you're interested in uh, monthly subscriptions for as little as a dollar a month or a pound a month, I can't remember what I said it as. Uh, there are some perks there, and um, I'm always uploading stuff there. If you're interested, check it out. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you, and I'll see you later.